Good morning, saints of God. We are grateful to the Lord for what He has done in the past week. We begin a new week one more time. I want to delve more into God's Word. Remember, this is our year of knowing God. This is our year of knowing God. Um, last week, various speakers dealt on the fruit of the Spirit. This week, uh, we have a new topic that we'll be discussing with you and i pray that it shall impact your life and that you shall become more and more like jesus amen okay so this week we want to speak on um actually a scripture proverbs chapter 6 uh, from verse 16 to 19 and we are dealing with what god hates what god hates um one may see that and say that wow uh, the tendency for us to lean towards encouraging and comforting scriptures knowing that god is love which is uh, who he is actually we may not see that god actually hates certain things and has a hatred for 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 things and this is clearly spelled out in the, his word it's in the bible um bible says all scripture is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training so um we cannot take one part and leave out the other so i pray that god will use this to prune and help us to grow better in him proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 to 19 says speaks about some of the things that god hates and is an abomination before his sight it says six these six things that the lord hates yea seven are an abomination unto him a proud look a lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood other scriptures say murder uh, verse 18 a heart that devised wicked imaginations you are always scheming uh, feet that are swift in running to mischief verse 19 a false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among brethren so always sowing seeds of discord amongst the brethren the bible says that this is what the lord hates and uh, so basically these are the the, the things that uh, solomon is telling us that the lord hates and add some versions say that <clears throat> they are detestable to him uh, god's hatred for sin is so intense that in one particular generation he destroyed everybody and uh, just left one family and we know this to be noah so god has a, a a strong hatred for sin and it's because of the state in which he is and who he is which is holiness so we'll deal with the first one he says um in verse 17 a proud look others say a, a hot haughty eyes so i uh, will speak on what pride is and how we can overcome it by the grace of god so pride seeks to inflate self and puts yourself above god so you are inflating yourself it's not about others you have a level of self-importance above god uh, if, uh, c.s lewis i mean if a very popular uh, man of god made a statement which struck me he said pride leads to every other vice i believe this is one of the reasons why it is first in the list in the book of proverbs or what solomon was speaking about so pride leads to every other vice it is the complete anti-god state of mind it is the complete anti-god state of mind and we see in the book of isaiah chapter 2 that there is a day that has been destined 
just for the proud. He says, the Lord has a day in store for all the proud and lofty. For all that is exalted, they shall be humbled. Other versions say, for the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted, he shall be brought low. So God has a special day, not for other things, but for the proud and lofty. And the Bible is telling us that they shall be brought down. Lucifer, who is uh, probably a king of, of a proud look or even pride, uh, we, we see that in Isaiah fourteen twelve he emphasized on himself eyes. He says, Isaiah fourteen twelve to 14, I read, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which doth weaken the nations? For you said in your heart, so he didn't say it with his mouth, so pride is a state of the heart. It, 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 normally, someone will not come to you and say, well, I'm a proud person. No. What is the condition of your heart? It says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation, the sight of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high. He's essentially saying that he's going to be above the Lord, the Lord of hosts. So the originator of pride we see here is Lucifer. When you read several scriptures in the Bible, you would also recognize this. Um, so when when you have a proud heart or in your heart you are proud, uh, you are leaning towards being Luciferian. The last scripture on James 4, and then I'll come to a a modern version of pride, which we normally uh, ignore. It says, but he giveth grace, more grace, but he giveth more grace. This is James chapter 4, verse 6. Wherefore, he saith, God resisted the proud, but give grace unto the humble. So he's telling us clearly that God is your opposer. When you are proud, God is your poser when you are proud. And I want us to, I just wrote a couple of things down that may be in our hearts that the Holy Spirit brought my attention to. This is what pride pride looks like. You don't seek God in your struggles and you try and do it all by yourself. That's the first one. Secondly, you think a blessing in your in your life is because of your talents so that was lucifer you know the bible says he was the cherub that covereth and he was made with uh, special stones so he looked upon himself and then and then uh, it was part of the reason that he wanted to rise above god so god who is the originator and the giver of all gifts and talents you 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 feel that um you are placing yourself above the lord and this is very, very dangerous. So you are in a choir, you've gone for rehearsals for a long time, you are not being allowed to minister, then you have uh, self-importance in your heart that don't they having the head of my melodious voice. So who are you who are you in the kingdom for? What what is your agenda in, in, in what you want to do? Are you serving others or you are serving yourself? You know? You are preaching and you can spit out the scriptures. You can speak. Uh, you are good with oratory and, and, and the like. And in your heart, secretly, you, you, you call, you, when people call you papa or mama or apostle, you, you secretly love these things, you know. Uh, these are all signs. Uh, the third one, worrying what others will think of you. You know, huh, the Bible says, "Be anxious for nothing, or be careful for nothing." You know, but with prayer and supplication, should present our request. So, anxiety, worry. You know what others will say about you. What others will think about you. What about what the Lord has said about you? That supersedes every other thing that uh, men will even say of you. 
wanting praise from others i think i've spoken a lot about that desiring attention from others frequently you always want to be the center of attraction in in the room you always want people to be talking about you everything must be you 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 then um the sixth one feeling threatened by those who are better than you at something you know you 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 feel so threatened when you see someone who is better than you you want to bring the person down you want to you are harboring certain evil intentions when a person makes a mistake they said yes you try and magnify it in your heart and tell your colleague something you know or even at church someone can sing better from you why don't you learn from the person can someone can preach better than you why don't you learn from the person their preaching techniques someone can do there's always someone who is better than you <laughs> There's always someone's better. So once you accept that, you are able to become a better person. You know. So these are a couple of the examples that the Lord led me to uh, that I want I want to emphasize. In my closing remarks, if there's anything we should boast or be proud of, Jeremiah speaks about it. He said that let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth, let him glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. So this is the Lord speaking. That if you want to boast about anything, boast that you understand and know God. And the Bible makes us understand that the Lord is past finding out. (laughs) You know, so the full extent of the knowledge of God, we would not know, but gradually, he will lead us into underst- having a better understanding of him. I leave you with this. One great woman of God spoke about this and it really touched me Ye- several years ago. She wrote a piece called My Proud Humility. And in it she said that pride will prevent you from being spotless by giving you a spot. I pray for you that today you shall overcome pride in the every sense of the word. You shall go before the master's feet and shall repent and shall say, Lord, I want to be like Christ, who even when he was walking on the earth, sought only one thing, the glorification of the Father. In all you do, in all you do, don't allow self-ambition to be ahead. But like Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 says, but in loneliness of mind, let us esteem others better than ourselves. May this be our prayer each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen.